Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again. Nice to see you. If you have been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that one of my favorite things to do is to cause a flood. Well, maybe not favorite things to do, but something I do quite a lot is flood things. There are lots of reasons you can get a flood with an aquarium. You can have a mechanical failure. You can have a, an accident. You can have cracks. You can have leaks. You can have things like that. But nine times out of 10, when I cause a flood, it's because of this stupid memory my insufficient brain power. <laughs> uh, I, it's always, I'm doing a water change, I'm refilling a tank, and I wander away and get distracted by some blinking lights or something else, and then completely forget about it, and then notice the aftermath and disaster. Most recently, I killed an entire tank of fish. Usually I just make a mess, but the fact that I started to kill things now as well, that's really upset me. So I've been looking for ideas of how to fix this. How can I, how can I fail safe my water changes? So I've come up with a couple of ideas. I've asked you guys for help as well and had lots of suggestions. Some of them I tried and failed, um, but I'm gonna show you two main ones, which I think I'm gonna use them both and they're fairly cheap, fairly easy to uh, put into action, so maybe they'll be of some use to you as well. The number one suggestion for most people was, why don't you just use a float valve and clip it onto the tank? And a float valve is something like this, so your water comes in here, and then as it fills up, this rises, and then this cuts off the supply, so the water there has literally got a physical stopper, and it stops the water coming out. Um, I've used these in sumps and things like that in the past and they're fine and they do work but I couldn't find one that you could just clip on because it's just this bit. I have 3D printed this part um, but it's usually just this bit and it requires a tank to be drilled so as you can put this because it starts here goes all the way through and the water comes out here so it's usually requiring a tank or a container to be drilled so you can run your water line through it. There was one version that somebody pointed out to me afterwards, thank you Scott, which you could clip on top, but it required you to screw it into every tank and it, I just didn't like it. So, I got my new 3D printer, <laughs> employed it and put it to some use and created this thing. So basically, it's a semi-flexible part here, so no matter the thickness of the glass, I can clip it onto a tank and I can move it from tank to tank and it's easy enough to just put it in and when it fills up, there was one that I found on Thingiverse which was slightly different but it it put it at a, a silly angle, it was more for buckets I think and I couldn't get it configured to the way I wanted it, whereas this one, this will be universal, fit most tanks and I can adjust this to see where I want the water level to be at and this works for most of my tanks, all of my tanks so far. These things are a bit rubbish though. They never fully turn off, so while it'll let the water out normally, when it gets to that point, it'll mostly stop it, but there will still be the odd drip. So I think this will catch 99% of problems, unless I started a water change and went away for days at a time, then the drips might overflow a tank. But I think this is really good. The way it works is you just take it, clip it onto a tank, set it away, forget what you're doing, and come back and go, oh, I haven't flooded anything, fantastic. So that was number one. So as you can see, that's fairly effective and it's very easy to use, so I just have to take it out like that. The water kicks on, move it on to the next tank. And I can be out away doing other jobs in the fish room, getting on with something else, and I don't need to keep coming back to constantly check. Suggestion number two was this thing. So this is a stop valve. It's a normally closed valve, so it's an electronic valve, um, a solenoid down at the bottom bit here. This is just another 3D case that I've printed for it. So it just kind of clips it all in together. But basically, if there's no power going to this, it's closed. And as soon as you apply power, it opens. So open means water can flow through, closed means it can't. And what I can do is I can power this to a smart plug. So I can control that with Alexa or something like that and say, start a water change, create a routine on the Alexa or any other smart home device that you want, where it will turn the power on for whatever you want. I'm going to use an hour probably because I can do most of my water changes in an hour. And then even if I completely forget, I've still got this on the end of the hose, but if I completely forget, that will actually close that because the routine on the Alexa will close the smart, will tell the smart plug to power off after an hour and completely shut the water line. Perfect. So I think I foolproofed all the ways that my stupid head can make me forget that I'm running water and doing water changes. 
and hopefully that's something that's easy enough. All these things, I'll put links in the description, but all these things are cheap as chips. Um, I know I've printed 3D versions of them, but you don't need to do that. You can find versions of it. I think this was about six quid, something like that. Um, so dead easy to implement yourself. You don't need any specialist knowledge or anything like that. You just need to run it in. I'll talk a little bit about how I'm doing my water changes, because it might not apply to everyone else. If you're using buckets and things like that, well, more fool you, but <laughs> that's not going to work for you. I'm running an HMA filter, which is this thing here. It's called a heavy metal axe filter. What it does is it takes heavy metals out of your water, so I don't need to dechlorinate my water before I put it into the tanks. So that comes straight from my mains water feed through a shower hose, so it goes to the right temperature, through these filters, which is a five micron or less sediment filter, and then a couple of carbon block carbon granule filters, and some nice clean water at the right temperature comes out, and I can fill my tanks with that. That will be in line somewhere, so as I can turn off and on my water, and this will be at the end of the hose, so therefore no matter what my stupid head tells me to do, or doesn't tell me to do, I won't overflow a tank by doing water changes. Hurrah! Hurrah! Is that what I want to say? Obviously the ultimate goal here is to have all the tanks on automatic water change systems, so it'll be even more stupid brain proof. But there is always going to be a need to have uh, manual water changes. Even when I had the automatic water, water change system in the old fish room, you still want to do large water changes every now and again. There's, it's not something you can just ignore and get away with. So I think this will be useful in the long run. Um, so it'll let me do those large water changes without having to worry about it. And that's the ultimate goal here is not have to remember anything because I'm not very good at remembering. So ultimately these tanks will all have uh, feeds coming off the HMA filter to drip water into them at whatever rate I want to set and overflows into the water butt and then out to the big water butt in the garden. But this will be my go-to solution. The two things together, the solenoid cut-off valve. Um, again, the important thing of this is you get one that's normally off. So it's... it's so automatic water chain system, uh, float valve, stop valve, all these three things combined should mean I'll never have another flood in here that's my forgetfulness's fault. I'm not saying I won't have some failure and some piece of equipment won't break and flood something, that's bound to happen, but I won't have anything where it's me forgetting that's causing the problem. Because that's the most infuriating thing when it's your own fault and you know, ah, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have killed those fish or I wouldn't have flooded that floor or I wouldn't have whatever it might be. So hopefully we'll not have that problem again. And these are fairly cheap and easy solutions. So there's no reason why you couldn't do this if you just have one or two tanks. Um, even when I had one big tank in the living room, that was the tank I flooded more often than not. The fish room usually escaped quite freely. Um, but I think it's worth it. For the amount of effort and cost that goes into these things, um, the amount of heartache and pain and cost that it could save you is immeasurable. Anyway, that's all for today. Just a quick one to run you through some of the little things I've been tinkering with in the fish room. If you like this kind of thing, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Click all the clicky, 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 clicky things. We'll see you on Friday night, 9 p.m. usually. I have a live stream. We can come and discuss any and all things there. Um, but thank you for joining me this time. Click subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.